King Mohammed VI of Morocco. King Mohammed VI, ascending to the throne of Morocco in 1999, embarked on a transformative journey for his nation. Born on August 21, 1963, in Rabat, he was educated in traditional Islamic schools and prominent Western institutions, equipping him with a unique blend of cultural and modern perspectives. His father, King Hassan II, groomed him in the intricacies of governance, laying the foundation for his future role. Upon his accession, Mohammed VI focused on modernizing Morocco's socio-economic landscape. He initiated the Mudawana reform, revolutionizing the family law to enhance women's rights, a bold step in a predominantly Islamic country. His commitment to economic development manifested in massive infrastructure projects like the Tanger Med port, which was pivotal in positioning Morocco as a key player in global trade. Under his leadership, Morocco saw significant tourism and renewable energy strides, particularly solar power, aligning with global sustainability goals. He also championed the cause of Western Sahara, advocating for Morocco's sovereignty while pushing for autonomy for the region under Moroccan sovereignty, showcasing his diplomatic acumen. However, his reign has been challenging. Critics point to limitations in political freedoms and human rights issues. The balancing act between modernization and maintaining traditional power structures has been a persistent theme in his governance. His unique approach to blending firmness with modernization has transformed Morocco and positioned it as a beacon of progress and stability in North Africa. José Eduardo dos Santos of Angola José Eduardo dos Santos, who served as president of Angola from 1979 to 2017, played a pivotal role in shaping the country's post-independence era. Born on August 28, 1942, in Luanda, dos Santos was an engineer by training. His early involvement with the Popular Movement for the Liberation of Angola, MPLA, set the stage for his political ascent. His presidency began after Angola's independence from Portugal and the onset of a devastating civil war. Dos Santos's tenure was marked by efforts to rebuild the nation, leveraging its rich oil reserves to drive economic growth. He focused on infrastructure development, and under his leadership, Angola emerged as one of Africa's leading oil producers. However, his rule was also characterized by controversies. Allegations of corruption and nepotism marred his administration, with critics accusing him of enriching himself and his inner circle at the expense of the broader population. Despite Angola's wealth, widespread poverty and inequality persisted, sparking domestic and international criticism. Dos Santos's foreign policy was notable, with Angola playing a pivotal role in regional politics, particularly about conflicts in neighboring countries like the Democratic Republic of Congo. His retirement in 2017 marked the end of an era, with his successor, João Lorenzo, taking a notably different approach, particularly in tackling corruption. His legacy remains a complex tapestry of stability, economic development, and controversy, reflecting the governance challenges in post-colonial Africa. Paul Kagame of Rwanda Paul Kagame's journey from a military leader to the president of Rwanda is a tale of resilience and controversy. Born on October 23, 1957, in southern Rwanda, Kagame grew up in exile in Uganda, where he developed his military acumen. He played a crucial role in the Ugandan rebel force that overthrew Idi Amin and later led the Rwandan Patriotic Front, RPF, in the Rwandan Civil War culminating in his pivotal role in ending the 1994 genocide. As president, a position he assumed in 2000, Kagame embarked on a mission to reconstruct Rwanda. His administration focused on economic development, healthcare improvement, and education reforms, turning Rwanda into a model of African development. Notable achievements include significant strides in gender equality, with Rwanda having one of the highest percentages of women in parliament globally. However, Kagame's presidency has been shadowed by criticisms over authoritarian tendencies and suppression of dissent. Accusations of human rights abuses and restrictions on freedom of speech pose questions about the cost of Rwanda's transformation. His foreign policy, particularly military interventions in the Democratic Republic of Congo, 
has also been a point of contention. Kagami's leadership illustrates the complexity of navigating post-genocide recovery, balancing economic development with political freedoms. His story is a testament to the challenges faced by leaders in post-conflict societies. Muammar Gaddafi of Libya Muammar Gaddafi, who ruled Libya from 1969 until his fall in 2011, remains one of the most enigmatic figures in modern African history. Born on June 7, 1942, in a Bedouin tent near Sirte, Libya, Gaddafi was influenced by the pan-Arabism of Egyptian leader Gamal Abdel Nasser. Seizing power in a 1969 coup, he abolished the Libyan monarchy and established the Libyan Arab Republic. Gaddafi's rule was characterized by his unique political ideology, outlined in his Green Book, which combined elements of socialism, direct democracy, and pan-Arabism. He utilized Libya's vast oil wealth to implement social welfare programs and improve the country's infrastructure, significantly elevating the standard of living. However, Gaddafi's eccentricity and often brutal tactics made him controversial. His support for various international militant groups and involvement in international incidents, like the Lockerbie bombing, led to strained relations with the West. Domestically, his regime was marked by suppression of dissent and human rights violations. Gaddafi's downfall during the Arab Spring and subsequent NATO intervention turned his once stable rule into a symbol of the volatility of power. His death in 2011 marked a dramatic end to his four-decade-long rule, leaving Libya in a state of turmoil and uncertainty. Yoweri Museveni of Uganda Yoweri Museveni, a central figure in Uganda's modern history, has been at the helm since 1986. Born on August 15, 1944, in Ntungamo, Uganda, Museveni's early political involvement was marked by his participation in rebellions against the dictatorial regimes of Idi Amin and Milton Obote. His rise to power was through a blend of military strategy and political acumen, leading the National Resistance Army to overthrow Tito Okello's government. Museveni initially earned acclaim for restoring stability and implementing economic reforms in a country ravaged by years of conflict. His policies focused on liberalizing the economy, encouraging foreign investment, and combating HIV-AIDS, which significantly reduced the prevalence of the disease in Uganda. However, Museveni's prolonged rule has raised significant concerns. His tenure is increasingly criticized for authoritarian tendencies, with constitutional amendments allowing him to extend his presidency. Human rights abuses, suppression of political opposition, and corruption allegations have tainted his image as a reformer. Despite these criticisms, Museveni's role in regional stability, particularly in mediating conflicts in the Great Lakes region, is notable. His government's approach to counterterrorism, especially against groups like the Lord's Resistance Army, has been a critical aspect of his foreign policy. Jerry John Rawlings of Ghana Jerry John Rawlings, a pivotal figure in Ghana's political landscape, led the country through significant transformations. Born on June 22, 1947, in Accra, Rawlings's military background played a crucial role in his ascent to power. His first stint in leadership began with a coup in 1979, followed by another in 1981, after which he established the Provisional National Defense Council, PNDC. Rawlings' rule was a blend of authoritarianism and pragmatism. He initiated drastic economic reforms, moving Ghana from a state-controlled economy to a more market-oriented one. These reforms, often in collaboration with the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and World Bank, were pivotal in stabilizing Ghana's economy and reducing external debt. Despite the economic successes, Rawlings's tenure was marked by human rights concerns, including the suppression of political opposition and freedom of the press. The transition to a democratic government in 1992, with Rawlings as the elected president, marked a significant shift in Ghana's political trajectory. His legacy is complex, characterized by economic rejuvenation and political controversy. Rawlings' impact on Ghanaian politics and his charismatic leadership style continues to influence the nation's discourse. Nelson Mandela 
of South Africa. Nelson Mandela, an iconic figure of resilience and reconciliation, led South Africa's transition from apartheid to a multiracial democracy. Born on July 18, 1918, in Mavezo, South Africa, Mandela's journey from a rural village to the global stage is a testament to his enduring commitment to justice and equality. His early involvement with the African National Congress, ANC, set him on a path of activism against the apartheid regime. Mandela's leadership in the ANC's defiance campaign and his subsequent imprisonment for 27 years are hallmarks of his struggle against racial oppression. His release in 1990 marked a pivotal moment in South African history, catalyzing negotiations to end apartheid and leading to his election as the country's first black president in 1994. As president, Mandela championed reconciliation, seeking to heal a nation divided by decades of racial segregation. He emphasized the need for forgiveness and unity, famously donning the Springbok rugby jersey during the 1995 Rugby World Cup, a symbolic gesture towards bridging racial divides. Mandela's post-presidential years were dedicated to humanitarian efforts, including the fight against HIV AIDS and the establishment of the Nelson Mandela Foundation. His legacy as a global symbol of peace, dignity, and the struggle for human rights continues to inspire generations worldwide. Haile Selassie of Ethiopia. Haile Selassie revered as a defining figure in Ethiopian history, ruled as emperor from 1930 to 1974. Born on July 23, 1892, as Tafari Makonnen, he rose through the ranks of the Ethiopian nobility. His ascension as emperor came when Ethiopia faced external threats and internal challenges. Selassie's reign was marked by efforts to modernize Ethiopia, including introducing the country's first constitution, infrastructural development, and attempts to reduce feudal practices. He played a significant role in establishing the Organization of African Unity, showcasing his commitment to African unity and independence. However, Selassie's rule was subject to controversy. His response to the 1973 famine in Ethiopia and accusations of autocratic governance fueled dissatisfaction. The 1974 revolution, which led to his deposition, marked the end of a long-standing monarchy in Ethiopia and the beginning of a tumultuous period in the country's history. Selassie's legacy is multifaceted, encompassing his role as a symbol of African independence and his contentious domestic policies. Historians and scholars debate his impact on Ethiopian society and African politics. Thomas Sankara of Burkina Faso. Thomas Sankara, often hailed as Africa's Che Guevara, was a revolutionary leader whose brief but impactful rule transformed Burkina Faso. Born on December 21, 1949, in Yako, French Upper Volta, Sankara's military career set the stage for his political ascent. In 1983, he seized power in a coup, and his presidency marked a period of intense reform and radical change. Sankara's vision for Burkina Faso was rooted in anti-imperialism and a commitment to social justice. He implemented ambitious programs aimed at eradicating corruption, improving public health, and promoting gender equality. Notably, he championed women's rights, appointing women to high governmental positions, and encouraging their involvement in public life. His economic policies focused on self-sufficiency, reducing reliance on foreign aid and promoting local agricultural production. Sankara's environmental initiatives, including a massive tree planting campaign, were pioneering efforts in sustainable development. However, Sankara's radical policies and authoritarian style led to internal dissent. His assassination in 1987, under circumstances that remain controversial, brought an abrupt end to his visionary leadership. Sankara's legacy as a charismatic and transformative leader inspires movements for social justice and anti-imperialism across Africa and beyond. Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana in the annals of African history, few names resonate with the enthusiasm of liberation and the bittersweet symphony of triumph and adversity quite like Kwame Nkrumah's. His ascent from the passionate flames of anti-colonial activism to the hallowed halls of leadership as Ghana's first prime minister and president 
is a saga etched in the heart of Ghanaian legacy. Nkrumah's unwavering vision was the beacon that guided Ghana to break free from the shackles of British colonialism in 1957, a monumental achievement that set the stage for a continent-wide cascade of independence movements. Nkrumah's powerful and insistent drumbeat voice rallied the spirit of a nation yearning for self-determination. His words, spoken with the force of undeniable truth, became the soundtrack to Ghana's awakening. The imagery of Nkrumah at the podium, declaring Ghana's independence, is not just a freeze frame of a historical moment, but a perpetual inspiration to the enduring power of a unified people's resolve. Beyond the euphoria of independence, Nkrumah's ambitions soared to the zenith of Pan-African ideology. He was not just a man of words, but also of action, spearheading unprecedented modernization in Ghana. His initiatives paved the broad avenues, erected the schools that would foster future leaders, and laid the foundations of healthcare facilities that promised a healthier nation. Each brick laid in this transformation era was a testament to Nkrumah's dream of a self-sustained, forward-moving Ghana. Yet, the path of progress is often fraught with tribulations. Nkrumah's presidency, laden with aspirations, was not immune to the tremors of challenge. His tenure, marred by economic struggles and political unrest, faced the storm of dissent that culminated in a coup d'etat in 1966. This abrupt end to his controversial but ambitious rule signified not just the fall of a leader, but also the quelling of a visionary's dream for a united Africa. The echoes of Nkrumah's legacy, however, remain indelible, reverberating over time, reminding us of the cost of greatness and the relentless spirit of a visionary. If you enjoyed the journey through this video, remember to hit the like button and subscribe for more enriching tales. Delve deeper into Africa's untouched narratives, where voices go unheard and stories remain unfolded. Thank you for tuning in.